Welcome back. We're moving into a second conversation for today. We have been talking about back to school programs and initiatives and vocational schools. And this one is also very important. It's being done through the YWCA. Yeah. So we have the General Secretary, Deanna gomez Parafit with us to tell us about uh, a very important program called HELP coming out of the Y. Tell me. Good morning. morning. And thank morning. you all for having us this morning. Um, our HELP program is a core program for the YWCA. Mm -hmm. We like to think it's part, mainly why YWCA is why, what YWCA is. Um, it is our Helping Early Leavers program. It's a program that gives girls a second chance. Yeah. So while YWCA now says our mandate is to cater to, to empower women and youth, mm -hmm. we still have our girl focused or female focused activities, the HELP program being one of those. Yeah. It's an absolutely fabulous um, program. So if you've dropped out of primary school and you want a second chance, the HELP program is the program for you. Mm -hmm. If you finished primary school but you didn't get into the high school you wanted to get into, we're now offering or bringing back PSE classes so you can come do your PSE classes for a year, take a PSE again and then hopefully yeah. get into the, the high school that you want to get into. It teaches you a skill. So we've often said we do sewing, cosmetology, um, food preparation or hospitality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we're now saying we're doing clo clothing and textile. Mm -hmm. So we're bringing that um, this, the more technical or scientific aspect of it so you can filter more easily into a TVET mm -hmm. with, when you come out of a YWCA yeah. um, and food and nutrition. You're still going to learn the same things, but now you have the science of it as well. If, you know, to, uh, we're ensuring you have the science of it. The age well. group that you work with is very interesting, 13 to 18 years old. Yeah, um, and you know, I think when we think of dropouts, very often we think of young boys who perhaps were kicked out of school for disciplinary reasons. Um, and that's just an assumption we're making. But what's the story with these girls? Why, why are they at 13 or 14 um, not going back to school? They've dropped out for various reasons. Yeah. And so um, and literally the program is in essence a second chance. You've dropped out for... You, didn't, you weren't doing well, your parents needed you to help them at home, you had a baby, you were incarcerated for some reason, or kept in a host hostel for some, you know, you did something that was out of order. Um, or you finished primary school, but you never went on to high school. So keep in mind it's that, that age yeah. range. Or you started first form, your parents couldn't afford, you felt you dropped out of first form, there were other things more important to you and your family at that time. Um, or you just weren't seeing the importance of an education. Yeah. You, you just don't want the theory part. You want more practical. Probably you want to well. learn something that you can leave and go earn some income from immediately. Yeah. You know, it's that. So it's, we have a wide um, variety of reasons and girls who come to us, yeah. and they're all embraced. Um, we all know they're looking for the same thing, an opportunity, an education, a skill. Mm -hmm. They want to be able to have something that they can utilize to better themselves, so, um, to em so we're there to empower them yeah. in that way. How long yeah. is the program? It's a two-year program. Okay. Um, so with the um, onset of, you, you can come in and say you just want to do hospitality, or you just want to do cosmetology, or you just want to do sewing. Or you can come now and say you want to do PSC, and what we do, you do PSC, but we tuck on, um, so you learn a skill as well. So when you come out of there, if for some reason you don't Sorry. go beyond um, primary school still, because what we're offering is a primary school level, yeah. like the standard six level for the, because that's all we have for the PSC. You don't have standard three, four, five. You have mm -hmm. standard six. six. Yeah. And then, well, of course, for the um, skills, it's the other, it's a two-year program. Yeah. So, um, so that's really what the HELP program is. It is really a fabulous program. So you come in, you get remedial math and English if you're just doing a skill. Mm -hmm. um, of course, if you're doing PSC, you're getting PSC, math, English, science, or, um, so social so. studies. And then you also get a skill along with it. You get um, life skills, um, intro to computer, which we absolutely cannot teach anybody anymore without in yeah. computer being involved. Um, we're making sure now there's some art source and sports involved. We have a pool, so we're kind of promoting more that our girls who come there should all be swimmers, mm -hmm. you know. So it really is a, it's a program that um, we do a lot of fundraising for. Mm -hmm. It's out of our health program that comes or catering. Um, so we like the idea of our girls learn how to, to f make food so we're able to utilize them and give them the experience, yeah. you know, um, that is necessary. At yeah. least uh, as far as we can 
and take them. And then the same thing with cosmetology. So we're really trying to move and as we're trying to look for resources where we can actually have like an incubator mm -hmm. for them. So when you're done with us, or graduated from our um, YWCA health program, you can either bring your food to sell at the Y or you can work in our catering program. And the same thing for cosmetology. We already have a seamstress and a sewing room, so our girls it easily filter into the um, sewing aspect. So, mm -hmm. you know, we, and we sew uniforms for our school. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I, I know this year, this summer for sure, we had two of our girls who just graduated helping nice. with the sewing of our jumpers and our shirts. Mm -hmm. So, in, you know, I, there, there's always, a, apart from the behavioral or just um, misfortunes of life, uh, one of the reasons persons might leave early is because developmentally, or as to who they are, that they've lost something. Um, how, how does the early pro, um, program move not just beyond the academics or giving the skill, but to put them back, because it's an extremely successful program, mm -hmm. um, to get them back to realize, you know what, I, I'm worth it. I'm what, what, what in the program appeals to that aspect of who they are, to put them on the path to get back into the early success stories? Well, I, I, well we do a lot of personal development. Yeah. So, so you come and there's personal development, there's helping you to see how people who have come through the program with similar stories like yours have made something good of themselves. Um, we do have a counselor, or, and we try to involve. Counseling is a huge part of what we do, because lots of times our girls come with issues um, so we have to provide that service, um, but literally there's mo we do motivational stuff when we when there's wo we involve our girls in everything we do and if and you do know about the why so we yes. do there's women's month there's youth month there's er any human rights mm -hmm. anything that goes on almost applies mm, to the why automatically yeah. and we are involved and so we bring in people to talk to our girls um, we work closer with. CRD, mm -hmm. um, and so we have um, yeah. coming in to help to counsel and to talk with them and to move them along. And so it becomes, and like I like to tell people, when you work at the Y, you're not just taking a job, especially if it's in our health program. You've come to work for a cause. Mm -hmm. So you can't come and think and, that you're going to take a job, eight to five, I'll run out from there. It doesn't work like that. There's a lot more that goes on. So we do realize we take in girls with special needs. So there's, there's no barrier on who we won't accept other than if you come to our um, school to register and you can't provide a birth certificate or you, you can't show proof of who you are. And, you know, so we, we are, our eyes are open for yeah. possibilities of things that are not right. Um, people who are coming to register you, but a, a father figure, but can't show any. So that type of, so that would be the only types of things unless you, are you really blacklisted for some really devious crime kind of thing you know yeah. but other than that we take in girls so even if you have special needs we are still included and i find there's a there's a lovely togetherness that happens there's no singling out of i am special and or i am better than you kind of thing that happens at the i'm um, helping the health program so it's really a lovely place for girls of all backgrounds who really and truly is looking for a place that will embrace them so what about meeting the cost of it? If, if someone dropped out, never proceeded from primary school or dropped out because of financial reasons, or maybe had a baby and is now on their own, um, how do they afford it? What does it typically cost? So it's $30. A, registration fee is $260. Mm -hmm. Monthly, it's $30. So it costs you about $560 to $580 to come to the, to the program. So it's good, but for some girls, it's still, it's still hard. So we are always fundraising. We fundraise to subsidize our health program. We have um, people in our country who every year donates to fund a girl. Mm -hmm. We just recently, I had a meeting yesterday with a gentleman who his wife um, did sewing all her life. That was what was her second chance. Mm -hmm. And then she did really well. So he's come back. He, they want to give back to an institution that works with girls, but they want to donate. Well, they're thinking about it. They want to hear what the why had to um, somebody who's taking up sewing because that was what was near and dear to oh, his nice. wife. Yeah. You know, so we're always looking for people who want to do that. Five, six, five, eight, some people is a drop in the bucket. To other people, it's a struggle to get their education. Yeah. You know, so we fundraise a lot. You know, we have so lots of... you can of always offer money for a scholarship. You can always offer money for a scholarship. Yeah. And 560 or 580 goes a long way yeah. in helping to educate one of our girls. But like, you know, hmm. you know <coughs> it, the, the program has been around for a while and every year I know you sit down and you strategically plan and you probably have to 
com parts to my question. The first is, um, as you plan for this year, uh, what new attractions that you're very excited about to see implemented this year in the program, a new component or a new feature that you think will make the program even more of a success to the E+. Plus? And uh, secondly, you know, where else would you like to see the expansion and development of the hill? Um, okay. So I might have touched a little bit on both of those questions. So our big deal this year is we've brought back PSE. Yeah. We had not done it for a while. In earlier years, we had, and we somewhere along the line dropped it and just continued with our skills. Yeah. We are bringing back PSE in a big way this year. We realize that girls are out there who want to a chance to take PSC, they want a chance to go back to high school, they want that. So I'm it's, even if it's just for my own, um, knowing that it's on part of my credential, I completed primary school right up to mm -hmm. passing my PSC. Mm -hmm. And um, well, now if I want to go back to um, high school, I have a chance at the high, I know like some are coming, they want to get into um, certain college, high schools that you have to have a certain grade. Yeah. And they didn't make the grade by, so they're coming back because their aim is to get into that particular high school. Wow. Yeah. You know? And so we realize there is the need for it. So, yeah. so there is that aspect of um, what we're doing, and we're, we're happy to be doing this yeah. because we realize there's a need for it. What was your second question? The second yeah. question is, where would you like to see it go? You didn't have the time this year, the resources, or whatever you didn't have. But you see, next year, this is where we're going. The incubator. I want where our girls, when they graduate out of our catering, graduate out of our cosmetology, graduate out of our sewing, can come back and get their skills or work and earn money right up the Y, and that be their launch pad yeah. into the world. We find they come out, some of them can't afford IT vet, they can't go to Almas for the cosmetology, Almas or anywhere else, and so they, they're left stuck in this kind of limbo stage, unless they have somebody who's willing to hire them and then they earn really meager wages. So we're thinking if we can provide for you a salon, which is where YWCA used to be, but we've kind of strayed away from that. So we want to go back to where you can walk into a salon at the Y, or girls that we have trained will be there to attend to you, um, supervised by their, um, by the seasoned yeah. cosmetologists and our teacher. And the same thing for our sewing program, because we've gone fully now into where our Seamstress is separate from the person who teaches um, sewing, mm. or clothing and textile. So there's kind of a separating of duties. There was a come. Previously there was our caterer was or a person who taught hospitality. Now there's a a food and nutrition um, teacher who teaches that on the hospitality aspect. Mm -hmm. And then we have our um, our caterer will be separate. So that's where we want to go. Where our girls can get a launch pad, or why can operate as a launch pad or a yeah. incubator yeah. for our girls literally i've looked at it and i'm like there was a person looking a, a salon a spa looking for a a hairdresser the other day we had one of our girls that we had graduated we knew she was good she was supposed to have gone on to almas we contacted her realized she dropped out of almas because her mommy didn't have enough money for her to continue she was only 16. she wasn't seasoned enough experienced enough um, out, like outspoken enough yeah. to fit into this past. So I realized, no, we're letting out our girls and not all of them are going to be hired. So yeah. there's still that lacuna in the whole you know, picture. What happens to our girls after they leave? What's, what's, what's the relationship so, like with the private sector so that they could perhaps understudy and maybe after they complete their program be taken on for a continued apprenticeship like? I think that is also a, a good idea. We have, we do what's called on, OJT as a, on the job training. So all of our girls go through that in their f second year. Yeah. And I don't think that we've ever necessarily pursued where it's an apprenticeship program, yeah. but some of them would get hired by some of the, um, the, personal, the persons or the organization that, have, that took yeah. them on for their OJT. But that is also a good idea. Um, until we are able to provide the incubator, the incubator. that we want, yeah. that is, that is an, uh, an approach that I want to explore and to encourage. Yeah. The YWCA definitely is well reputed. Yeah. We, it's, we're, it's, I won't say it's easy, but when we approach the private sector, we get assistance. Yeah. And so um, I know there are lots of good people out there who want to yeah. give and to help our program. And, and that so, was going to be my next question. Mm -hmm. There's always a challenge in sourcing funding for specific age groups and specific marginalized groups. Uh, kids are always cute, you know, mm -hmm. but when you talk about teenagers, oh, that's mm -hmm. a headache, you know, or they chose that or they didn't listen mm -hmm. to mom and dad. What has it been like fundraising for this group of girls who 
whether it was circumstances or bad choices or actually getting involved in something that they shouldn't have, uh, what is the support that you get for it? I, I believe because it all comes under the YWCA, yeah. and the YWCA is known for all that it does and has been doing, from the seniors to the babies yeah. that we embrace. They fit in as part of who the Y, who are the Y's clients and who the Y cater to. Okay. So when we speak of the HELP program, and it's, it's really, it really is easy to show what the HELP students do. You know, um, there's a lot that is done mm -hmm. um, by our HELP students or through our HELP program. Um, so it is, it's not like, oh, I don't want to help yeah. the HELP program. I'm helping the YWCA. And then we kind of, well, do you want it to be to the HELP? Which is one of the areas we really and truly ask for a lot of help because yeah. the tuition from the HELP program, it's a small cohort of students at any given time. The tuition doesn't cover the cost, the cost of carrying of um, that program. So we really have to fundraise on a heavy basis mm -hmm. for the HELP program and our other programs have to help to subsidize that particular program. Mm -hmm. And so then we would go out and, um, and look for assistance for that program. So we're always encouraging people who have that extra mm -hmm. and would like to donate to a good cause that really is an excellent cause. Yeah. You can see the product of what your, um, where your money is going now, yeah. what you're using. So, but it's, it's not difficult. We can often showcase what these girls can do and what they do. You know, maybe it's not getting out enough, but because I, was, I still find people surprised to know that we have a help program or what the help program is, a helping early leavers program, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. As, as mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, I'm, I'm always using the why as an example of what could possibly happen if we had consistent level of success in a small area and you know I, I wanted to ask the bigger question of what do you account for the success I mean anybody could put up a building and anybody can say they're, uh, they're dealing with seniors alone <laughs> or dealing with uh, uh, kids or dealing with these programs but what accounts for the why is it just the fact that it's the why and there's a system <laughs> there it's a brand it's a brand it's what account, why, e and even though we have other programs who, um, and more is always better, duplicating it. You have Restore Belize that might have something similar. You might have a school that deals with, or, or Tubal that deals with skills, and that's for males. But my point male is, and female. Male and female. But what accounts for the consistent success of the why? I think the why has never wavered in what its objectives are. The why has always been there to empower women and girls, women and youth now is what we say. It has always had a group of very enthusiastic, very dedicated women driving the YWC. Not to say that men don't support us because with the women comes their husbands and their children. Mm -hmm. And so it has become a family um, effort. So if I'm involved in the Y or husbands or partners or children become part of the Y and that has been what has the Y has been like yeah. from its inception where and if you speak to any of to Miss Sonia Linares to Miss Jennifer Smith to um, our president um, Dr. Craig to all of the older um, women who brought the Y to where it is now they will tell you girl there were days when we used to <laughs> nearly have to sleep here mm -hmm. and that was it the women gave their everything to the YWC yeah. so while times have changed and we've seen a different um, type of Sorry. Not type, but a pro work ethic. Yeah. There's still that dedication. You walk on a YWCA compound and we have a function going on. Our entire staff knows that you become involved. It is the wise activity. And so that's what we're breeding, or that's what we promote, I should say, in our girls, in our staff, in our board, or it comes from the board as well, in the members of the YWCA, mm -hmm. and it's a tradition almost. So it, they... The people who came before me and those of us who are there now did an excellent job of making it very clear what the why is about. Yeah. And the why really is not a place you can come and just say, oh, I can't come hang out. <laughs> or I can't just because I want to teach and I'll come eat and I'll left tree. Mm -hmm. The amount of fundraising we have, and last year one of our new staff said, Miss, you can't divide up the amount of things we have to go to. I'm like, if it's a why activity, Yep. All staff has to be there. So why we are a voluntary organization, we ask people from outside to volunteer. Well, those of us who are employed here, 
we need to give back. Yeah. So, yeah. and that doesn't sound like volunteerism, true? <laughs> <laughs> that's not like I did tell you. But I believe if we can ask it from people who are not we can, in, yeah. inside the why we ask it, it from. So, but it is an inbred. But it's it keeps inbred. the people who believe in the cause. It, yeah. it does. It literally mm -hmm. does. So now when, so, you know, and I think it's important for us to believe that when we're working at the YWC, we're working at the YWC. We're not working at the pool. We're not working at the daycare. We're not working just at the health program. We're working for the overall yeah. YWC. And there is, it's good work. Yeah. It is good work. It's challenging work, yeah. but it's good work. You and know? you know, I think, mm. and, and that's what my fascination with the health program, I think it really is the epitome of what the Y stands for, which mm. is, uh, no young girl should be left behind mm -hmm. for whatever reason they're mm -hmm. in a particular circumstance. And it does offer uh, an opportunity for any, for any young girl who fell off the tracks to get back on, whether mm -hmm. in employment or a trade or to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Have you had students who've passed through who went on into uh, a further program in the past, like went back to school? We've had, yes, we've had girls who've gone back to school, who've gone through ITVET, who's gone to Almas. We have people who are on our board, who've come out through our program. Nice. I always say if we would call like a meeting of all of the people who are, who are the alumni of the YWCA, it'd be amazing to see who are the products of the yeah. YWCA. Yeah. You know, they've gone on, There's lot, there are lots of successes coming out of the YWCA. Mm -hmm. And maybe we need to laud that a little bit more yeah. and show you the people within our society who have come through the Y. You know, lots of times I'd meet people and say, girl, I, I learned for cook right there, no? All <laughs> true. Or my catering started, or I started at the one now I'm at the IT vet and I've moved on, yeah. you know, or I teach at a different institution or I'm in a whole different arena, but it's the why that got me nice. where, where I am. So definitely. So mm -hmm. what's the enrollment period for help? It started um, around June. Mm -hmm. It's still ongoing. We, ca we, ca we carry, like I said, a small cohort. We're trying to grow it. Mm -hmm. um, this year we have, uh, last year we graduated 12 out of us. So this is how small it is, but we're looking, we can carry at least about 60 at any given time wow. in okay. first and second year. Okay. This year we've seen a growth. So we have about 2021 20, registered for our um, first year. Okay. A lot of it, like I said, is a PSE, but that there's still the interest in the skill, of course. And then we're still carrying the, the re-registered um, second years. Second, yeah. We've had girls come back. Oh, last year I did hospitality. I want to come back this year and I want to do cosmetology or nice. sewing. So there's even that. So it, it is still ongoing. Um, you have to have proof of, you have to have a social security card, birth paper, you know. Mm -hmm. I don't, we have to have proof that, this is Ministry of Education yeah. requirements. You yeah. can't just show up and register yeah. uh, without proof of um, who, who you are. But it's ongoing, and you can bring your girl during the course of the semester, you know, okay. and, and we can take you on. Maybe you might have to stay an additional semester. We won't tell you, oh, you have to wait and come back. Yeah. We can fit you in, we'll fit you in. Yeah. You know, we've done that for quite a few girls last year where they came in, their parents were looking for somewhere for them to fit in. Um, and so you took them mid-semester? Yeah. Mid-semester, so they might have one additional semester to do to complete. And uh, how can people support? You can, su you can call the office. Oh, before I forget, there's a branch of the YWCA in Belmopan. Yeah. This year, for the first time, Belmopan branch of the Y is launching a help program. Wow. And they're launching it with the PSC aspect as well. So we're trying to make sure our Belmopan Y now mirrors what we do mm -hmm. in Belize City, you know, and it is one institution. So it is a Y, Belize, and Belmopan is a, just branch. a branch yeah. of the Y, you know. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to make sure we start to look alike yeah. more often. So. Um, so you, you can access help in Bamopan or, or Belize. in Belize, yes. So and how can people help either one? Yes. So you you can do you can make donations for a particular um, program. You can say I want to fund a girl or two girls, and I want it to be that I've started a scholarship fund in my name, or and we can do that and let them mm -hmm. know, and we can send update you on who received and all that. But you can call into the Y. Yeah. So or it's two two three four nine seven one. Um, and say that you're interested, I will meet with you, yeah. and then we can go from there. Or you can just randomly donate to us. We have people come in and say, Miss, this is towards our help girls. They're not interested in who it goes to, yeah. they just know that that money cool. is going to help two individuals for the school year, and nice. we have people who do that. So. And if I have a young girl at home who's not going back to school, or if I am a young lady who's not going back to school, I'm not quite sure I can make the payment as mm -hmm. yet. Should I still come in? Come in. 
come in? Because what we can do is we can look to see if we have so many people who are, sometimes you just need to ask them, you know, and they are willing to help. We have a girl who really needs help. Would you help them? So yeah. come in, register. We will try and see how we can help you. Um, and if could help you to find some of the resources. Excellent. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much for coming in and sharing uh, information about this great program. Thank you for having us. We're going to go ahead and take a break now, and when we come back, we'll be joined by the Stationery House as we check out the latest in backpack fashions. So stay tuned.